All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's episode, I'm going to show you all the safety and the dangers of using oxyacetylene or gas welding. I'm also going to show you how to set it up and how to get to a neutral flame. So going forward in this video series, you are able to gas weld and braze and use a cutting torch. How cool is that? So brutal, so metal. Let's go. All right, this is a standard gas welding setup that you would see in most shops where there's two cylinders chained up to a cart or a dolly and that allows you to be able to roll the setup around the shop and get to where you need to so you can do some welding. Now inside these cylinders are two very specific gases. We've got oxygen here and acetylene here. Now each one has their own unique properties and why we're using them. So if we're making a flame, we're gonna have some kind of fuel. So that fuel is the acetylene and it makes such a good fuel that we can actually get it up to about 3000 degrees Celsius. So that's gonna be hot enough to melt just about any metal on the planet. Now our oxygen, the best analogy I can give you is that if you're trying to get a campfire going and it's just not hot enough, what do you do? You take a big breath. When you blow on those flames, feeding that fire, trying to get it hotter, and that's exactly what the oxygen's doing. So we put the oxygen with the acetylene and we are able to get crazy hot flames that we can melt metal and cut metal and do all that kind of stuff. Now, this setup looks very unassuming and all safe here, but um, it can be quite dangerous as I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so first up is acetylene and the inherent danger is that it is flammable and highly explosive. So if we have any kind of leak in our system here and we have a spark or a flame, even static electricity can set this off and we'll have a fire on our hands. So not only is acetylene flammable, it's actually quite unstable. In fact, it's so unstable that they can't even just put pure acetylene in the tank. They actually have to put it dissolved inside of acetone just to make sure it's stable enough to be able to ship it and transport it without having these things blow up. The the amount of pressure you are releasing out of the torch is also a safety factor. So on the gauge itself for acetylene regulators, it has a red line that you are not allowed to go above 15 PSI in the flow from the torch. Otherwise, it is so unstable that it can actually spontaneously combust. And then to top it all off, if these cylinders have actually been laid down on their side and you go ahead and stand them up and put them into a cart, you actually shouldn't use them right away. Good rule of thumb is you wait 24 hours with it standing straight up uh, to let that acetylene stabilize a bit. Now moving on to the oxygen cylinder, the biggest safety concern that I have with oxygen is that this cylinder has roughly 3,000 pounds per square inch trying to escape at any second. And uh, if you give this tank a, a knock and you rock your dolly over, if you're rolling this out without one of these protective caps on the top and you accidentally shear off the top of the valve there, you're gonna have a bottle rocket that's gonna take off and probably land about 20 blocks from your house. So really, really sketchy, lots of pressure. We have to make sure that we respect that. So the next dangerous thing about oxygen is that it is an oxidizer, which means that if you apply this oxygen to a fuel source, that fire is going to get even hotter. And certain things like oil, oil products, you can actually put oxygen on them and they will actually turn them into fires and spontaneously combust. So whenever you are checking the valves or fittings, or if you're thinking you need to lubricate these fittings, you do not. Do not put any kind of oil products on any of the fittings to check for leaks or for lubrication because the oxygen will actually cause them to start on fire. Okay, so now that we know some of the dangers of the gases that we're dealing with, we kind of need to be able to tell which gas we have in here, even just from the point of view of what we turn on to start our torches. So there are five different ways to tell what gases are which, and these are what they are. Starting with a really easy one, number one is read the labels. You're gonna have labels here. This one says acetylene, this one says oxygen. Just read the labels and that'll tell you right there. So the second one is color. So color of the hoses and colors of the cylinders themselves. So looking at the hoses, you've always got a red and a green hose. So think red is hot fire flames. That's our flammable gas, that's acetylene. And green, think of green grass giving off oxygen. So that's an easy one to remember that way. Now the cylinders can be slightly different colors. The oxygen is usually black, but it can be green as well. And then the acetylene is always red or kind of like a dark purple. The third way to tell is looking at the top of the cylinder itself and looking at the shape. If it has a rounder shape to it, that's telling you it's a higher pressure cylinder. And the higher pressure one is that oxygen, which is like 3000 PSI. And if you look at the acetylene, there's still a bit of a round curve, but it's more flat on the top. And so that's a lower pressure cylinder. Usually uh, in an acetylene tank, you're looking at maybe 300 PSI. So quite a big difference. All right, and then the fourth way to tell is looking at the hose and the regulator fittings themselves. So if you look at the red one here, which is acetylene, 
it's got these little notches on the nut or the fitting. Those notches are telling you that this is a left hand thread. Now, the reason why they do that is so that you can't actually get these mixed up. And the other reason why I like to think about it is they've put it on the dangerous flammable gas. So if a little kid actually knows the lefty loosey tool rule and gets a wrench on here and tries to undo it, they'll actually just be tightening it up even more and they'll probably give up. So you can see here, there's a notch on every corner of this fitting for the acetylene regulator to go on. So that tells you that it's acetylene and that it is actually the left hand thread to be able to get this on and off. And the fifth way to tell them apart is through smell. Now it's kind of like a last ditch resort to figure out which gas is which, but it's also got a safety thing there too. So if you take your torch valve and you open up your acetylene and give it a whiff, it has this rotten potato smell, kind of sulfury smell, and it's pretty distinctive. And why that smells like that is kind of the same reason that they put kind of sulfur smelling in propane. The gas actually doesn't have a smell, but they've put that stink in there so that when there's a leak in your setup, you can smell that and you think, oh, I got a leak, and then go and fix it before you have a fire or an explosion. And then if you give a whiff of oxygen, it really doesn't smell like anything. So that's how you tell the two apart. All right, so cylinder safety, you're gonna want these things always standing straight up and chained to the dolly that you're using. That way there's no risk of these bottles falling down. And never ever use these laying down, especially acetylene. If you have an acetylene cylinder laying down and you open up the torch valve, you're gonna get way more than 15 PSI coming out the end and there's a good chance it's gonna be super unstable and might cause a fire or explosion on you. Now, if we've got a cylinder here that's empty, we're gonna be shutting this off, put our drench on, and instead of lefty loosey because it's left hand threads, we're gonna go the other way with it. All right, so if we're gonna change out this empty cylinder and we're gonna roll it across the shop to change it out, uh, we're gonna put one of these safety protection caps on. Just spin them on by hand all the way. No tools needed. And then kind of a good practice is you write M, T on it nice and clear and put it on the bottle a couple spots and that tells somebody that this bottle is empty that way we know which ones are full or not mind you you can always just give them a little pick up and you'll see which one's heavy or not then you're going to remove the chain that holds the cylinder in place in the dolly so these cylinders especially when they're full they can be really really heavy so make sure that you are bending with your knees and keep your back straight and lift with your legs and uh, just bear hug it i find that the easiest way now to move the cylinder easily around the shop, make sure you have a pair of welding gloves on. And what you do is you lean the cylinder over at an angle and try to find the balance point, kind of like you're doing a wheelie on a bicycle or a dirt bike. And once you find that balance point, basically just use the palm of your hand in a welding glove to kind of cradle the top of the protective safety cap. And then what you do is you use your leg and you gently give the bottom a little kick and roll forward and you just keep it going across the shop. Okay, once you have it into the cart, make sure you chain it up first. Then you can take off the protective safety cap. Check the seal on the fitting and make sure there's no debris inside the main bottle valve. And then install the regulator. Make sure it's nice and tight with the wrench. Okay, while you're not looking at the gauges, slowly open up the main valve on the cylinder and then use soapy water to check any of the fittings that you've undone or any that you're trying to check and see if there's any leaks. If there's any bubbles up here, you got a leak, you're gonna have to fix it before you move forward. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run through the gas welding equipment really quickly so that you know what the names of the parts are and roughly what they do. And that way when I show you how to get to a neutral flame and I'm referencing these parts that you know what I'm talking about. So cylinders we've already talked about, they hold the gases that we require for the gas welding. On the top of the cylinder, we have a main bottle valve and this is what allows the gases to escape or not escape. And it is lefty loosey to open, righty tighty to close it up. Now, if you forget what that is, it's actually stamped on the valve as well. Now, when you open up the main bottle valve, the pressure that is inside the cylinder will try to escape and it's going to be way too high for us. So what we need to do is put on a regulator. Now, often the parts, just like car parts, 
have a name that tells you what it does. So a regulator regulates or controls the flow of the gas through the regulator. And so we can turn down the pressure, for example, in oxygen, we can go from 3000 PSI down to one if we wanted, just by adjusting this handle. Now on the regulator, there are two gauges. We have one gauge here. This is the closest one to the valve and it will tell you what the pressure is inside the cylinder. So whether it's empty or full. And then this gauge tells you how much PSI is coming through the regulator and going into your hoses. So we're gonna use this for setting our flame later. So on these regulators, these handles for adjusting the pressure here, they are the only thing that is kind of backwards from everything else. So for example, if I want to increase the pressure here and allow more to flow, I actually have to go clockwise. If I want to back off on the pressure or fully stop any pressure from going through, I actually go counterclockwise. So that's sometimes tricky for people to remember, but this is a trick that I teach my students. So if you look at what's happening in here, this is a screw that as you tighten, it goes down in like a normal screw. And what it's doing is you'll feel it getting tighter because you're squishing down a spring, forcing a sealed valve to open up and allow gas to go through. When you're backing it off, and it gets looser, you'll, that's the spring tension allowing itself to fully extend and seal. All right, coming out of the regulator here, we have another part called a spark arrestor or a flashback arrestor. Now what this thing is, is it's like a one-way check valve that only allows the gases to go one way. In fact, when you install them, there'll be an arrow pointing in the flow. And what these do is they prevent anything from going back up the other way, such as a flame or a flashback coming up the hoses and going into our bottle and causing an explosion. So pretty required safety feature. If you don't have these on, get a set of these and put them on. I would recommend you put one right after the regulator and one at the other end of the hoses. Um, that way you're protecting your hoses as well. Coming out of our spark arrestor, we have our hoses. So we've got our acetylene and our oxygen, and these come in different lengths, but essentially it's just to be able to get you to get your torch uh, to where you need to work. Now, I would always check on the condition of your hoses. If there's any kind of age cracks or if there's any leaks and repairs and stuff like that, don't use them. Go get yourself a new set of hoses. And while you're at it, probably a new set of spark arresters as well. Now attaching to our hoses, we have our torch body. Now this guy's job is to regulate the flow of the gases. So these are torch valves that we can adjust our flames with and adjust the different gases. And it comes together and it actually mixes the two right here and it comes down and connects to our welding tips. Now connecting to our torch body are our welding tips. Now you can get these welding tips in a whole bunch of different sizes. They start with a triple or double zero for really, really small ones. So the hole or the orifice is really tiny, really low temperature flame. So you're welding thin stuff. And then these numbers start to go up the bigger the orifice gets. So the one, two, three, all the way up to six or seven, I believe. And you can even get massive ones that are called rosebuds or tiger torches. Big, big, massive amount of holes and you get really a lot of heat of those guys. Now, a rule of thumb for when you're putting these on your torch body is that the pointing up part should be facing to the same direction as the valves. The reason for that is so that when you have a torch and you're constantly using it and putting it down, you can put it flat down on a table and not have it roll to the side and actually catch something on fire. So to put these on, you just spin them on righty tighty and you want it so that the end is facing up with those valves and just use your hand. There is a rubber O-ring in here that will make a seal so you don't have to get a wrench and start crazy tightening. All that does is it usually squishes and damages your O-rings and then they start to leak out of here. So you can see the tip is facing up the same way that those valves are. If you get tired of welding pretty things together and you feel destructive and you wanna cut something, well, you can get up to a cutting torch here and uh, put one of these guys on and start cutting things. I will save that info for a future video on how to set up and properly use. And this guy, same deal, just spin it on by hand to your torch body. Make sure that the torch tip is facing the same direction as your torch valves. Cool, cool, cool. We're ready to start, right? Uh, no, uh-uh. We got to have some protection for our body. So we're going to have some PPE or personal protection equipment that we should be wearing when we're gas welding. And we're going to start from the top and work our way down. Starting at the top, you're going to want to protect those precious locks of yours or maybe what's left of what's up there. So what you're going to put on is one of these welding beanies. And not only will they protect your hair and the top of your head from getting burned from random spatter or anything like that, but they will also make you look like the coolest welder in the world. Ching! So next up is protecting our eyes. Now you've got a couple options here. Uh, these are quite cheap options. You can get something from Princess Auto for like really five bucks on sale sometimes. Uh, these are the Anakin Skywalker pod racing goggles as I like to call them. And they have a flip up lid here so you can kind of see what you're doing and still have the safety glass part. And then as soon as you start welding, flip them down and shift in the top here. 
Or the other option, which I kind of like a little bit better, is just a full green tinted face shield. Now you can get these in different shades. So if you want it a little lighter or a little darker, and uh, essentially they're just a face shield that you can put on. And when you're ready to start welding, flip it down and it tints it and protects your whole face from getting any kind of pops and spatters. All right, now next up is our ears and our hearing protection. So if you are already working in industry, then you already know that you are listening to drones of machines and drones of industrial fans all day, and that's gonna make you deaf. So you're already wearing your earplugs. But um, a side benefit of wearing earplugs for welding is that when you get your head cocked to the side or you're looking up over welding overhead and you get some spatter, uh, instead of it going into your ear and sizzling around in your ear wax, it just kind of falls off the end of these things and protects your ears. Now as for protecting your body and your arms and your legs, the best defense is just putting on a pair of coveralls that we've got no exposed skin to have spatter fall on or you know have some heat against your skin. And then if you want to protect your coveralls from getting the little pinhole burns and stuff, you've also got a welding apron that you can put on over the front of your body or you can even put on a full welding jacket with your arms all leathered up as well. Um, nice options when it's nice and cold in the shop. Now as for protecting your hands, your hands are right next to the heat source, either holding the torch body or holding your filler rod, and uh, you gotta have some extra protection. So you're gonna get yourself a set of welding gloves. These are made out of leather, nice and thick, so that they can absorb a bit of the heat. And um, make sure that they have a gauntlet, which is this kind of welding cuff on the end of the glove, and that kind of protects your wrists and a little bit up your forearm. That way, if you're rested on a table or a hot surface, you're not gonna get hurt as well. Now, I'm not one for wearing jewelry, but if you are, I would recommend you take off these things when you start welding. Uh, gas welding, as soon as you lean forward, this is gonna lean forward and start absorbing some of that radiant heat from that torch that you're using. And you're not really watching it, so it actually be getting really close to the flame. And then as soon as you sit your head back up, this rests back against your chest and gives you a pretty nasty burn. And then if you're electric welding, it's metal. It's metal. You're asking to get electrocuted, somehow becoming part of the ground circuit, so don't do it. And then for your feet, you should have closed toe shoes. So no open sandals, no flip-flops, none of that kind of stuff. You gotta have something that if the metal spatters or a hot piece of metal falls on your foot, it falls off and you don't get burned. Now, if you're working in industry, that's not really good enough. You're gonna have to get yourself a pair of steel toe boots and make sure that they are certified with the green triangle for CSA approved so that we don't buy some cheap knockoffs that are actually not protecting your feet. Before you start welding in your area here, you gotta expect that there's gonna be sparks and flames and all kinds of stuff. So you get any kind of combustible that's gonna flammable products, right? Spray paint cans, cans of gas. Somebody's taking a gas tank in a vehicle or a small engine. Flammable, oily, gas-soaked rags. Any of this kind of stuff has to be cleared out of here so you don't have potential for a fire. And not a bad practice. Make sure you don't have all your hoses kind of under your area too, so that way the air is no chance that any kind of metal is going to be burning into your hoses. So before we get started, we also need one tool. So this is a striker, and this is what we're gonna to use to ignite our acetylene flame. So it makes nice sparks that we can ignite that acetylene. Do not use lighters. In fact, don't even have this in your pocket if you're a smoker, because as a welder, you gotta remember that this is a compressed gas cylinder sitting in your pocket, has a small little leak, and you have constant sparks and heat and flame from welding around you. There's a good chance this is gonna blow up in your pocket and take a chunk out of your leg. So don't even have it on you, use a striker. All right, one of the sayings that I like to teach my students so that they can remember which valves are turned on and in which order, help keep it straight in their minds, is A before O or up you go. Boom, Michael Bay explosion style. Now, you don't actually blow up if you get this wrong, but there are a couple steps in the process that you can't actually mix up. You cannot light oxygen and then turn on acetylene. Acetylenes are fuel, so it's always A before O on all these processes, and I will show you how you will keep track of that as we go forward. All right, now I'm gonna show you the steps to get to a neutral flame. So first up is we gotta open up our main bottle valves. So starting with our acetylene, so A before O, and I'm only gonna open this a full turn and that's it. And the reason for that is if there's a fire and I have to get to the tank and shut the fuel off quickly, I can. I just one turn, it's closed up. So open it slowly and don't be looking right at the gauges because there are cases that somebody has not backed off the regulator and when they open up the cylinder, the, the gauge can actually explode out on you because of the high pressure it's trying to regulate. So stand to the side, one turn, settling. Okay, oxygen, same thing, except we are gonna stand to the side, open it slowly and the oxygen bottle is a double sealing valve. So you actually have to open the bottle completely all the way. Otherwise it tends to leak and come out the valve and we're wasting our oxygen. All right, time to set the pressure on our regulators. Now I teach my students to set it to five PSI for both. And it has to be set 
while that torch valve is actually open and it's the gas is flowing. Otherwise, what happens is when you open up the valve, you're going to find that your 5 PSI has dropped a couple of PSI and you're not getting what you need. So torch valve open. This is our red hose, so our acetylene. Crack it open counterclockwise, you don't need a ton, and look at the gauge. Now right now it's at zero, and that's because this handle's backed off. So clockwise, I should feel the spring getting a little tighter, and I'm watching on this regulator, and I'm gonna go up to five PSI. And then really, really important, close your acetylene, make sure that it's not leaking. All right, so now we gotta set five PSI on our regulator for our oxygen. However, if you look at the scale on this gauge, it's different from the other. In fact, the first number we see is 40. So we gotta go way less than that. We gotta figure out what these mean. So there's a green arrow at the 40, and then the next green arrow in between zero and 40, that's gonna be 20. And then there's three stages there. So each one of those black lines is worth 6.5 PSI per notch. So what I just tell my students is to get one notch, and uh, that's close enough for us. Okay, so open up our torch valve for oxygen and turn this dial clockwise until we get to one notch and then don't forget to shut off righty tighty your torch valve. Okay now here comes the fun part we get to light this up. Now when you were lighting this acetylene up do not have it at your face. Do not have it pointing at your buddy's face and don't have it pointed at any of the bottles or the hoses or the regulators, right? We don't have any fires or anything that way. And a, kind of a weird one, do not point this down on concrete floors to do this for some reason. Um, what happens is you heat up the concrete and it expands rapidly and it actually can explode up in your face. So safest way is just kind of have it up, pointed up away from you when you go to light it. Now, when you go to light this and you're thinking, oh my God, which one do we do first? Uh, what's that saying? A before O, so we've got acetylene before oxygen, so we're gonna open this one up. No more than a quarter of a turn. You don't need to have a huge massive flame and scare the crap out of you. So quarter of a turn, facing away from you. Put the cup of the striker right in front of the flame. One little click. Now, first thing you're gonna notice is all of this black soot, this smoke, and this is really particular to acetylene. When you see this, we can use this to help guide us to where we wanna set the level of acetylene. So slowly open it up more, Lefty Lucy, until that smoke goes away. Something like that, okay? Now at that point, you're done with the acetylene. Now you're gonna to jump to the oxygen torch valve without bumping or moving the acetylene one. So, if you open up the oxygen too quick, it's going to go and blow out your flame. So just open it nice and slow, and then I'll show you what's going to happen then. So slowly open it up. You get this hot, hot white flame, and then it kind of starts to shrink down, and you're left with two flames right now. We've got this long kind of blue flame, and then we've got this shorter kind of whiter, hotter, bluer flame right here. And there's actually a third flame right down about a quarter inch away from the end of the welding tip which is where we want this second one to be. Now we can control where that cone is by just opening and closing our oxygen valve. So to get a neutral flame, just keep going. Lefty Lucy, open it up more. Might hear it get a little louder. And then right when that cone meets up with that third cone, you are now ready to start gas welding. Now I don't know how much that's gonna pick it up, so I'm gonna film a green tinted lens for you guys so you can really see that. All right, so you're done your welding, you need to shut it all down. So A before O, clockwise. A's first, oxygen's off. All right now it's time to shut off the main bottle valve. So once again, A before O. So acetylene's only gonna take one turn to close, righty tighty. And oxygen's that double sealing valve, so it's gonna have to be closed all the way. Now, technically we're all shut off, but we're leaving kind of a dangerous situation because these hoses actually have oxygen and acetylene still in them. So if a forklift is to run over them or if somebody is welding next to them and they start melting into this, we actually have acetylene in here and under pressure. So the safest thing we can do is we can bleed out the system. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, next up, I'm gonna open up my torch valve here and I am going to bleed out all the pressure from the regulator and all from the hoses. So. Open up our acetylene valve and watch that the gauges both go to zero. Once both needles are at zero, that means there's nothing in the lines, nothing in the regulator. And then really, really make sure that you remember to close this valve back up. Okay, now to the oxygen, open up the torch valve and watch both of the gauges go to zero. Now the oxygen takes a lot longer, so really make sure that both needles, especially this back one goes to zero because of the higher pressures. Okay, and once you've got both at zero, close up your torch valve. 
The next thing we need to do is back off the regulator. That way, the next time somebody opens up our main bottle valve, we don't have massive amounts of pressure rushing against the diaphragm in the regulator, causing the gauges to blow out on you. So remember, it should feel like it's actually feeling looser. So in this case, it's lefty loosey, and you want to stop before this thing falls out. It gets really quite loose, and that's backed off. Okay, and then the oxygen, lefty loosey, should feel like it's getting looser. And then the same thing, don't keep spinning, it'll just fall off. All right, that's a wrap on another video from how to become a welder, this time on the safety and setup of your gas welding equipment and how to get to a neutral flame. And now that you guys know that stuff, we can move forward. We can start showing you some gas welding and some brazing and cutting torches. It's all really quite cool. So stay tuned for the next episode, which will be around shortly. And if you'd like any behind the scenes content, follow us on Instagram on Way of the Wrench. And if you have any questions about today's episode, any concerns, put them down in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time. Cheers.